that's it. It doesn't even go farther than that. I don't even, I call them up and tell them, thank you, but I'm busy those weeks. I, I got something because it's not even, it's not going to happen. And if it does happen, it's going to be a fucking wear out situation that I want to be involved. I got better shit to do with my time. Like fucking eat brownies with you and goof on you and shit like that. How did you get into this? So you, we were talking earlier, you went to Columbia Law. Yeah. So you, the first, and this happens fucking every day. Where the first day you walk into a place, you go, maybe this ain't for me. Yeah. But you don't say it because you're already there. Yeah. Now you get that fucking degree, you marry your high school girlfriend, she gains 60 fucking pounds, <laughs> and now you're working and you're date doing two fucking things you don't want to do, and then it begins. That's it. Yeah. I would Listen, my first, uh, my first day of being a lawyer, I came back to my apartment on Bleecker Street, and my girlfriend had a key to the place. She was already in there. She's now my wife. Beautiful Italian girl from Bergen County, New Jersey. And uh, we're still, still together. We've been together since I was 24 years old, 20 years. And she, uh, she looked at me and she said, how was, your, uh, how was your first day? She was so excited for me. Just beautiful and excited. And I looked at her and I just looked her right in the eyes and I go, I've wasted the last three years of my fucking life. I'm $120,000 in debt. I want to kill myself. I fucking hate this. What the fuck am I going to? First day. First day. I got home. I got home at like ten thirty at night, and one of the lawyers was like, well, "Let's call it here. You know, let's 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 pack it in early today. Pack it in early. It's ten thirty. I've been here since seven fifteen, but that's what it's like at those big corporate law firms." And my wife looked at me, and this is why we are a good, you know, match. I get sometimes worked up, and she looked at me and she said, "Well, you can't just quit. It'll make you look like a schmuck. You know, it's your first day, your first week. You just got out of law school. It'll ruin your career." She said, you got to do a year. Got to do a year, at least. And I said, all right, you're right. And I just did it, you know. I just did it uh, checking off a calendar every day. You know, you 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 were in. You know what it's like. Yeah. Don't let the time do you. Yeah, do the yeah. time. Just do the time. I'm not saying it's not the same, not nearly the same as being locked time up. Time is time, brother. Time but I just said, time, I got to kill it. I got to kill it. And I did a year, one year, one month, and one day. And I quit that job. And I said, you know what? My dad was a carpenter. He was a construction worker, union man. And I said, you know, there's money when guys get hurt. I'm going to go do slip and fall. And I went from like a thousand lawyers in this beautiful law firm. I mean, gorgeous law firm. Tip of Manhattan, overlooking the Statue of Liberty to five lawyers above a pizza place in Brooklyn. And we just did slip and falls. And, and you know, car accidents, malpractice. Like Danny, I went from like the fanciest law firm in the world to honestly... Standing on the corner outside, you know, Woodhull Hospital, handing out business cards saying, you got hurt? Call me. You got hurt? Call me. It was crazy. But I figured I could get into the, I could get into a courtroom and at least actually try a case. And that would at least be fun and, and exciting for me. Well, that sucks shit, too. Sounds like the Wolf of Wall Street, essentially. Yeah, except I wasn't making money like Leonardo DiCaprio. You know, I was how the, you I was the puppy money? of fucking Putt Street. You know? Do you remember how much money you were making at the firm? Because my girlfriend's in law school, and she doesn't she doesn't want to work in the firm because of what you were talking about, like the ninety hours, hundred hour weeks. Yeah. And she told me like the DAs when you start out can make like fifty, sixty thousand, which is good. But she tells me like when you go to like the first year of like a law firm, you make two hundred thousand or something. Well, crazy. that's maybe today, like at these back then. But I'm sure you know time value of money, inflation, everything. But uh, I think I remember my starting salary in like '96 was like eighty-four thousand dollars, and I think they gave like a ten thousand dollar bonus, so it was like ninety-four, ninety-five thousand dollars. And I think I made ninety-nine total that year. That's wonderful, you know. That's I'll I'll never say no to a dollar, you know. If you know, it's it was honest money, but I hated it. And when I was a slip and fall guy, I fucking hated it. Every once in a while, you got someone who was really hurt, who couldn't feed their family, and you helped them, and that was good. But a lot of times you had people where you're like, I know this motherfucker's lying. I know his back's fine. I know his neck's fine. <laughs> but you can't do anything about it because you have a duty. Yeah, if the client's do. telling you no, it really... If they tell you, look, I'm full of shit, then you you have to not represent. You have to say, I can't represent you. Um, but when they're sitting there saying, oh, you know, oh, it really hurts. It really hurts. Like, they're, they're fucking lying. Um, but what I did when I was doing that, because I was practicing law in Brooklyn and the Bronx and Staten Island and Queens and running around... 
I, I just, you know, and I think it's what a lot of writers do. I was just absorbing it all. And I did it for years and years. And just all the characters, the world, the craziness, the corruption, the scumbags, the pieces of shit, the ones who are trying to do it honestly, the, the, the fucking liars, the, cli- the, 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 the plaintiffs who you really feel bad for, the scummy insurance carriers, then the beaten down defense attorneys that work for the insurance carriers, the corrupt judges. I had a judge, I was so dumb, I had a judge trying to get me to bribe him in his chain. I didn't even fucking realize it. A couple of years later, he goes away for, for taking bribe. He wound up getting like nine years, I think, or something like that. Um, oh, judge Barron, I'll say his fucking name. I'm pretty sure. If that's not the guy, please don't sue me. I got the name wrong by accident, but I'm 99% sure it was Judge Barron. And he went away. Um, all this shit was going down, and I was just absorbing it and sucking it in. And the whole time, my whole life since I was six years old. Should I shut up? Is this boring? You want me to? No, no. this is tremendous. From the time I was six years old, I always wanted to be a writer. I just loved it. And when I got to the place where I couldn't take it anymore, I was going to fucking hang myself. I mean, I was miserable. I was so depressed. And my wife, uh, one morning I'm sitting there. I'd gotten up from work. She comes out of the bathroom. She had gotten herself ready. She was a school teacher. And she got her face on or whatever. She doesn't even wear makeup. She's just beautiful. She doesn't need makeup. But she did whatever she did to come out. And she looks at me, and I'm sitting on the couch. I'm still in my boxers and T-shirt that I wore the night before. I've been up for an hour. I couldn't bear to even put my suit on to go to court that day. And she looks at me, and I look up at her. And it's been, this has been going on for months now, deep depression. And I just look at her, and I go, it'll get better. Because I knew what she was thinking. And she looks at me, and she said, well, it better. Because I can't live the rest of my life like this. And that just put the fear of God in me. Because she's not the kind of woman you want to lose. So I had a week of vacation coming up. I hadn't taken a vacation in almost two years. And I said to my wife, I'm going to take a week's vacation. We're not going to go anywhere. I'm going to stay home. I'm going to write a screenplay. And she said, thank fucking God. Shut up about it already. Write the screenplay. So I took a week off and I wrote a screenplay. I started on a Saturday morning. I wrote that whole weekend. I wrote Monday through Friday. I wrote Saturday, Sunday, the next weekend. By that Sunday night, I was done. It was a screenplay called Slip and Fall. It was about a crooked personal injury attorney in Brooklyn. I wrote what I knew and submitted it to the New York International Independent Film Festival. It won. It got accepted and it won Best Screenplay. And, you know, I don't know. If, I, I always get the timetable messed up because it was 15 years ago now or something. Like, or maybe not 15, but 13 years ago now. Uh, but basically, uh, it, I, I got uh, David Chase read it and ha- asked me to write one episode of The Sopranos for him. And it changed my life. And I quit my law job. My wife and I got in a Toyota RAV4, which was my car, and drove 3,000 miles away from every person we knew, set up shop in L.A. to see if I could make it as a writer. And that's, that's, what, it. that's it. Blame that's it. That's what fucking take a chance Columbus did, bitch. Right. Can you explain? Because I went through it, too. I moved out here to be an editor on TV, and I, I worked for three years doing it, and two of the years I was working nights, and I had that every day. Like, when you wake up and you just dread going to work. Yeah. Like that's just. It's that's a, I did that for, I did that for about five, does. half a decade. That's awful five, way to live. Years. Everybody goes through that. This Every, is it, interesting conversation. Everybody it, goes through that, and it builds character. I think it's good for you. I, I, We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.